Hey everyone, Caleb Gussner here, Duck at Lad Dental CPAs and Advisors with another video in our Acquisitions Academy. Today I want to talk to you about how to approach the negotiation in your practice acquisition. Every deal uh, that occurs in the dental space is going to have some sort of uh, negotiation that occurs, whether it's a non-compete, the asking price, employment agreements, um, how long employees are, are, are staying on post uh, new ownership taking over, potential associate agreement with the seller, uh, every form um, of deal or every aspect of the deal is going to have some sort of negotiation piece that you and the seller are going to have to agree upon. A couple things I want you to keep in mind. Negotiation is where deals are made or where they break, okay? Every deal that blows up, typically that happens because the two parties are just not able to come to terms uh, on some sort of issue, whether it's the asking price, uh, non-compete, um, associate associate compensation post-purchase. Um, there are a multitude of ways uh, that deals can be blown up. Number one uh, way I've seen in the space is bad negotiation tactics. Now, not here to, to educate you or teach you on uh, the art of the deal and um, nickel and diming a seller, getting, getting the absolute best deal for yourself, but really I want you to have a mindset of how can I negotiate in a way that's respectful, but also fair to me as a buyer, fair to the seller, um, as most oftentimes the seller is selling something that they have worked most of their life, if not their whole professional life to build. That's one thing we have to keep in mind uh, going into negotiations. I know numbers um, are what they are. The numbers don't lie. The numbers make sense, especially in, in our realm of work. Uh, you know, we come in, jump in, take a deep dive into the numbers. The numbers are what they are. The seller can't change the numbers as oftentimes uh, they try to make the numbers look better than they are. They are what they are, right? That being said, we don't want to go in and offend the seller. If the seller is asking too much, it does not make sense to go in and say, uh, we've, we've run the numbers. We've had our dental specific CPA run the numbers for us. You are way over offering. You are, you are um, asking way too much for this practice. And I refuse to pay that much. Most times the seller is going to go, okay, well, good day. I'll, uh, I'll go find another buyer who I can see if I can get that much. Want to make sure we're being respectful in this. Make sure we have some logic built up behind our argument. If you think the asking price is too much, explain why it's too much. Don't go in and say, my accountant said, educate yourself. Have your accountant educate you on why the numbers are too high. Another thing you want to keep in mind is the sellers, nine times out of ten, want to make sure that their team is taken care of. They have relationships with their team. They know that their team is crucial to the practice. It's often one of the, the biggest aspects of, of goodwill in, in a sale is the team that is coming with the practice. The team helps uh, glue the practice together. The team is the practice itself, right? The, 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 the selling dentist obviously plays a huge role in that, but the team you're acquiring is is absolutely crucial for you to maintain and gives you an opportunity uh, to, to grow and build upon what the seller has created. The sellers, nine times out of 10, like I just mentioned, want to make sure their team is taken care of. So giving some reassurance, oftentimes I tell my clients, we're going to give the team at least a six month window of time for them to, to work. No, one, no benefits are going to be changed. No employment status is going to be changed outside of um, extreme circumstances. Your team is going to be taken care of. I'm going to give them an opportunity to, to work with me, see, feel me out as a boss, see how I operate. It gives me a time to evaluate them. It gives them a six month window of uh, giving them an opportunity to uh, present themselves to me. And at that point in time, you can, you can make a change um, to the, the seller's team, but just want to reassure the seller that the team, nothing's going to happen to them. Cause oftentimes, like I mentioned, they are, uh, protective of their team, want to make sure that they're being handed off um, to a great, great buyer because this transition is not only happening to the seller, it's happening to the team itself. Last part, don't want to make any drastic decisions off of emotion. I talk about this all the time, but oftentimes in negotiations, uh, tensions can run high, emotions can run high on both sides, the buyer and the seller. Um, Typically, when deals get blown up, it's because emotions get in the way. Guys need to make sure we stay calm in negotiations. It's tense. 
Uh, it can be it can be scary, it can be frightening, like I alluded to in the beginning, but want to make sure we have our emotions in check. If you don't feel like you can do that, maybe it makes sense to hire uh, some rep representation to go in and negotiate for you. As always, guys, if you have any questions for us, we'd love to have a conversation with you. Go to DougAlad.com, fill the work together form, and we'll talk soon.